Hi, Paul Howe, CSAT Way. I want to talk something uh, near and dear to my heart this morning. Uh, law enforcement training here in Texas. And we're going to have some issues. I see it coming on the horizon. And I've suspected this. But uh, what's going to happen now is I think there's going to mandate uh, through alert uh, 16, 24 hours worth of training per year for law enforcement uh, active shooter response. And uh, I don't have a problem with it if it's good training. But if it's not good training, then, you know, people need to speak up. Because now it's going to get forced down their throat as, a, as the gold standard. Well, our politicians are doing this. Politicians don't know squat about training. Chiefs, uh, they're just uh, managers. A lot of them, there are very few leaders as chiefs out there. Most of them want the, uh, the prestige of the four stars and all that. Same thing with sheriffs. And they're not doing training right now as they should. So, what is my basis or what is my background to talk on this? Well, when Alert started, I did a lot of classes for them. I have one of the original Alert manuals right here. And if you go to the citations in the back, I am cited probably more than anyone else in the, the manual. So what they did is they got, had a dry spell, needed more funds, went to the feds, brought in fed tactics techniques, which don't work. The problem is right now, law enforcement is not training. And what happens is you get uh, no training and you expect superior performance. It just doesn't work that way. What happens is you've got to invest in training. And a lot of these chiefs have not, well, gone to the proper training cycle. What does that mean? You should have been a training sergeant before you become a chief. If you get to the level of chief and you don't understand training, you don't know what good training is and what bad training is. Is that chief going to attend the alert training? No, he might you know, stick his head in and say, hey, good job, and then walk away and not knowing whether it's good training or not. The A in alert stands for advanced. You don't need advanced. What you need is basic common sense tactics and techniques. Right now, law enforcement doesn't shoot enough. I have a range here in Texas, had it for a lot of years, almost 20 years now. I know how much people train and don't train. And I know law enforcement, and again, uh, it's not their fault. It's the state standards. Because what happens is law enforcement, you get a certain amount of people in there for a job. And then you have a certain amount of people on a profession. The people get political. And what happens is they get lazy and they don't want to train. Well, you can give them all the alert, advanced stuff you want. But if they can't shoot, do safe weapon handling and their tactics, uh, there's nothing advanced about it. Advanced is doing the basics on demand, and they can't do the basics on demand right now. So we're going to take 16, 24 hours a year away from their training time to do uh, garbage training. And my best analogy that I can use is, you know, for you simple folks, is you want to put a, a, a gas tank additive in your car, you've got bad fuel problem. There's, there's some proven, you know, products out there. Seafoam was good. We've been using it for years. Cars, tractors. You've got some uh, Tektron. And then what you get in this world is you get advanced tactical crap. If you put that into your, your car engine or your training program, it's going to be BS and you're going to get BS results. So what happens is, I'm not saying all the tactics are bad, but you can't go to simunitions training without having a solid foundation of firearm Firearm handling, because I see it in all the body cams right now and case studies that I look at, and, it, and it's an issue. LEOs in Texas don't have the basics down. The firearm standards to become a firearm training uh, officer at the agency is very low, and it's, it's artificial. It hasn't been updated in over 20 years. So we're behind the power curve. So now you have this power struggle between alert and, and the t coal folks, and nobody's actually raising the baseline standards. They want to teach you advanced techniques, and you don't have the basics down. It's unacceptable. Uh, the instructor factory. Now they're going to require folks to go to alert, become alert instructor, and they're going to spew forth. They're going to be a meat sack and a khaki pants. They're going to spew forth all the alert doctrine without ever having to validate it. What does that mean, validate it? My instructors. When I have them go through, they have to go through a tech pistol rifle instructor, which is way harder than the state here. They have to do a shoot house instructor, which they actually train, live fire, CQB, and then manage the same scenarios. Alert doesn't have to do that. What they do is they go through a sim recreation, and the problem is these guys have never shot this or gals, live fire, and they're going to teach an officer on the street. Uh, and the officers recognize BS. They, uh, they recognize garbage training. And they go, well, I ain't going to do that. Well, they'll go to the class, get the ticket punched, and now you have another recipe for Uvalde. 
Go back in Uvalde and see how many of the responders, the 370 plus responders, were alert trained. Now we're, do, we're doing is we're taking an agency that has an F under report card and making the proponent for training across the state for a failed incident. And what have they done to fix their internal training and programs? Probably nothing, because it's a political tool now. Politicians are what they are. They are very fewer leaders, they're in it for ego, and what they do is, uh, we want the quick fix. Well, the quick fix is, is not there. There's no such thing as a quick fix. You have to restructure your firearm, your, your training programs. A lot of agencies right now, will, we can't make it too tough because we'll lose people. Well, I, I think you need to lose people. Otherwise, they're gonna have an incident on the street that's gonna cause you a, a, a public affairs nightmare, a news media nightmare, or they're gonna get sued. And so you have to figure out as a chief or the head law enforcement or a sheriff, which route you wanna go. Do you want your people trained to come home at the end of the day? Or do you want them to have a ticket punch uh, of training that gives them an artificial sense of reality with no baseline skills? So I know the answer to the test. This may kill some work for me. I'm fine with that. Uh, the people that go along with this type of uh, political training and recommendations are not doing the officers a service on the ground. So it is what it is. I want to, guys, I want to thank you guys for this, for listening, and uh, get up there and stir it up because I can't do it. I'm an outsider now looking in. What happens is the, the law enforcement profession right now is watered down. It's no longer a profession. It's becoming just a job. And when it becomes a job, the people that suffer are not necessarily the officers, it's the American citizen. So it's on you to fix it internally. I hope this tip helps you, the, this little talk. You take care, be safe, and I hope you get to the range.